Welcome to this video which discusses probability. Now first before we get into the formula for probability, let's look at the three ways that you can be given a probability. You can be given a probability in a graph, or through an experiment with somebody, or they might give you results in a table. All of these three ways are different ways that you can get the same information to find a probability. So let's look at an example now. If Sam, Lisa and Tom all flip a coin 10 times and record their results, let's look at how that information could be portrayed. Well first of all we could have that in a graph. You could record the number of times each person throws heads and each person throws tails. You'll be able to read off the graph that Sam here throws a head 6 times and a tails 4 times. Whereas Lisa throws tails 8 times and heads only 2 times. Tom is 5 of each. Now this is one way you could read the information. You could also read the information if you've been told about the experiment. They just give you a list. You could see that Sam threw a heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails. Or you could see that Lisa only threw two heads. You can count the number that they all did. That would give you the same information as this graph. Or we could put that information in a table. Where Sam threw six heads and four tails. Tom threw five heads and five tails. And Lisa two heads and eight tails. Hopefully you can see now, the same information is recorded, but it's all displayed differently. Now I'm sure you're aware that if you were going to flick a coin 10 times, you would expect to see 5 heads and 5 tails on average. Now in reality it might be a little different like this, and Sam and Lisa have both found different results. However, on average, you would expect to see 5 out of 10 times being heads, and 5 out of 10 times being tails. This is called our theoretical probability, because we're only expecting to see these results in theory. In actual fact, when we do an experiment, often the results are slightly different. They'll average out the same as the theoretical result, but actually, in each event, it might be slightly different. So if we're just going to be looking at Sam's probability, and we're looking at the probability how many times you could expect to throw a tails if you're tossing a coin 10 times, you'd get a different result to this 50%. Sam actually throws a tails four times. If we look on the graph, Sam is in blue here, and it shows four tails have been thrown. This gives us a probability that four out of our ten throws are going to be tails. Secondly, if we were given that same information as an experiment, you could look at the number of times that Sam threw a tails, all of the t's in his experiment. This again would give you four tails out of a total of ten throws. Or again in the table, four tails out of ten throws gives us a probability of four out of ten. Now this is our probability, what we've just written out as a fraction. Now just so you know, although 4 out of 10 is a perfectly correct answer, there are other ways which you could draw a probability like this. For example, you could simplify the fraction. That would give you an answer of 2 out of 5. This is also correct. Or you could change your fraction into a decimal. This is a number between 0 and 1. And often, probabilities are given as decimals. Where 0 is no chance at all. There's no tails thrown whatsoever. And 1 would be 10 out of 10 throws with tails. It's 100% likely that something will happen. Now if you're good, you can also change this decimal into a percentage. So 0.5 would become 50%, or the 0.4 in this case would become 40%. Now the formula we've been using to calculate all of these is the probability, the chance that something will occur, is the number of times that that event occurs. And an event is anything they're asking us about. In this case, it's the number of tails which came up. There were four tails that came up, and we divide this by the total number of trials there were. We tried to throw a coin ten times. Ten times we tried to get tails, but only four of them worked out. So we do the four tails divided by our total number of throws, and that's how we got our probability of four out of ten. This is how you're going to find all of the probabilities of the things you are going to be asked about. So let's look at what you need to know from this PowerPoint. You need to know that a probability is a measure of the likelihood or the chance that something will occur. For example, the chance you could throw a tails. You also need to know that events have a probability between 0 and 1. Where 0 is completely impossible, there's no chance it could occur. And 1 is you're 100% certain. You need to know that probability can be written with a P standing for probability, and in brackets you can write what the probability is about. So if we were going to write down the probability of throwing tails, we might write P for probability, and then in brackets we'd write throw tails, or just tails. This doesn't matter so much for your answers, but if you ever see this written in a question, just know it means the probability of some particular event happening. There are two different ways we can measure probability, like, like we looked at in the coin tossing example. The first one is a theoretical calculation. 
We know there's two options which could happen, heads or tails, and in theory we'd expect them to happen half of the time. But in actual fact, we looked at an experimental probability. This was using the proportion of times that the tails actually occurred. In theory we expected 5 out of 10, but an experiment showed that according to Sam, 4 out of 10 throws should be tails. This is called an experimental probability. And often, actually, in real life, we use experimental probabilities to back up our theoretical probabilities, not the other way around. The last thing you need to know is that the experimental probability of some event occurring is the number of times you try something, the number of times you actually get a tails, for example, divided by your total number of trials, your total number of events. That's the total times you flick a coin, for example. That gives us our probability, our mathematical answer. Let's look at how we'd apply this information in a question. Now this question tells us that there are 45 plants in flower in Anne's garden. 10 of the plants have blue flowers and 11 of the plants have white flowers. Now the first part of the question says, if a plant is chosen at random from Anne's garden, what is the probability that it neither has blue flowers nor white flowers? Now it tells us there are 10 blue flowers and 11 white flowers. This leaves 24 flowers left over. Now we can look at this, out of our total of 45 plants, we take away the blue and the white flowers, the 10 and the 11 blue and white flowers, and that gives us our 24 in total. We divide the number of non-blue and white flowers by our total number of flowers, by 45. That gives us a probability of 24 out of 45. There's a 24 out of 45 chance that you're going to pick a flower that's not blue and not white. And like we said before, you don't have to write it as a fraction. You can write this as a decimal, going 24 divided by 45. That would give you 0.53. Or change that to a percentage by timesing by 100. That would give you 53%. All of these are valid ways to write your answer, and this, and this will still give you full marks in the exam, no matter which answer you put. Let's look at question B now. We're told the heights of the 45 plants in Ant's garden were measured three weeks after they were planted. The heights are plotted on this graph over here, this histogram. So if a plant is chosen at random from Anne's garden, three weeks after they're planted, what is the probability that a plant chosen is less than 12 centimetres high? Let's look at the graph for this information. Now here, we have 17 plants which are between 11 and 12 centimetres. We have 14 plants between 10 and 11 centimetres. And we have 5 plants between 9 and 10 centimetres. Now we can add these numbers of plants together. We can do the 17 plus the 14 plus the 5 and divide by our total number of flowers and we're going to find the probability of a plant being less than 12 centimetres. This gives us an answer of 36 of these plants are below 12 centimetres out of the total of 45 plants. Again, we could write this fraction as a decimal that would give us an answer of 0.8 or as a percentage, which is 80%. You're 80% likely to choose a plant which is less than 12 centimetres high. And that is how we do probability.